know you're all hoping that I'm going to tell you how to recompose missing voice parts in Tudor pieces so you can grab my market. I'm jolly well not going to tell you. It took me 40 years to learn. You can find out for yourselves. It is the only source of English Latin church music which is precisely contemporary with a decisive period when both musical style and literary taste in church music and the texts that it's set is changing and it poses the fascinating question of why it is changing, what has it got to do with culture in general, with politics, with uh, official religious policy and that sort of thing, and what is it that is changing and what is being retained and how does the music come to have this peculiar power to re regenerate itself and what other external musical influences may be influencing it and where did they come from and how did they get there? Who are your favorites, or do you have particular favorites among the composers or among the pieces? I know that you, well, your yes, suggestions of favorites have very much guided our choice of repertoire through yes, this set of CDs, yes, yes. and we have always yes. agreed with you. Yes. I would certainly put Hugh Aston right up there as one, one of my favorite composers, not because he's a particularly polished or suave composer, but he's, uh, he, he has a, um, a knack of creating very eloquent musical structures, very persuasive musical, musical structures, which are rhetorical in the true sense, and they're based on the r rhetoric of the texts that they set. Um, I also like his rather uncompromising musical style, where if you start to look very carefully at his counterpoint, you start to see all kinds of what a more um, prissy sort of musical theorist might regard as, oh, you, you can't do that sort of thing, old chap. But somehow the conviction, the gusto of it, and the way he drives through to cadences uh, carries it all through.